hey everyone welcome back to my channel so in this video i'm gonna show you guys how to solve inheritance probability questions as one of you have requested i'm gonna give you a really easy way to approach these questions uh so that you can answer them quickly on the real deal so let's start it all right so there's a silly analogy that i've created uh, to make these easier for you guys imagine that you have a little baby who is the uh, future unborn child and he needs to get um, two chocolates he can only get two chocolates one from his mom one from his dad so his mom has two Reese's bars and his dad has two Snickers bars but he can only get one from each of them so no one parent can give both each parent only gives one chocolate and the baby gets to get two which means that out of the two Snickers bar his father will only give one out of the two Reese's bars his mother will give him one out of her two bars and so each parent has a 50% chance of transmitting their allele okay so the mom transmits one out of two the dad transmits one out of two, so they only have a 50% uh, transmission. So in order for this baby to get two chocolates, he can either get this Reese's bar and this Snickers bar, or this Reese's bar from his mom and this Snickers bar, or this one and this one, or this one and this one. As you can see, you have four possible combinations, and this is the origin of the Punnett diagram that we use to calculate inheritance, inheritance uh, probability with um, different modes of inheritance, right? So imagine, so here on the top, this is the father, for example, this one parent, and here is another parent. So per one possibility, if this is one, possible unborn child the father can transmit one out of his two alleles down and the mom can transmit one out of her two alleles down so each parent contributes with one out of two and there's four possibilities depending on a mix and match of different uh, combinations so you just understand this concept and we're going to use it for the next questions all right, so the first question says a married couple comes to the physician for routine prenatal counseling. The husband is 120 centimeters tall, which is pretty short actually, with disproportionately short upper and lower extremities, essentially uh, and a large head and a prominent forehead. Um, if you haven't already picked up on this, I guess you guys should know that this is a case of achondroplasia. This is how the patient it looks like he's unable to provide a biological family history as he was adopted his spouse is of average height so his wife is normal with normal constitutional features family history is insignificant they are concerned about their unborn child's height which will find is the best response to their concerns so before you look at the choices and get yourself confused you got to understand that if a guy or any person actually has a chondroplasia they must be autosomal um, heterozygous for the condition they have to be heterozygous because a homozygous um, individual for the, the achondroplasia gene will not live they will not survive so anyone surviving right there and living in front of you with a chondroplasia then 100 percent they are heterozygous all right and since so here assume that this is the uh, mutant allele and his mom is normal so we're going to give her to non-mutant alleles all right so what is the possibility that his unborn child um what is the best response here essentially i told you guys earlier that he his, uh, his father has a 50 percent chance of transmitting the allele and since any person who has a chondroplasia would be heterozygous, then there's also a 50% chance that he would be a, a, a chondroplasia, that would have a chondroplasia, right? So 
one out of two po like two out of four possibilities this child will get the uh, mutant allele therefore two out of four possibilities this child will have a chondroplasia so let's take a look at the choice if the condition is not heritable of course not it's autosomal dominant in most cases yes some cases are sporadic but since his father has it he most likely will have the mutant allele and will transmit it so he this is not true. The condition is heritable. The risk depends on the child's gender. This would have been the case if it's an X-linked um, mode of inheritance, but this is autosomal dominant, so you have to know that. Uh, so this is wrong. The risk depends on the mother's carrier status. I already told you guys, if you have, if, because this is autosomal dominant, it is sufficient to show uh, manifestations of achondroplasia if you only have one dominant allele so if she is indeed a carrier she would show a manifestation but here she's normal normal means that she has neither allele because if she did and it's dominant we know that it's dominant then she would show symptoms but here that's um, irrelevant the risk for the child to be short is 25% no this is the case for recessive conditions but for dominant conditions like that it's enough to have one allele like this and get the condition and so because his father has a 50% chance of transmitting his allele and once he has that allele he has the condition then his risk for being short is also 50% all right and so the correct answer is E okay I really hope you that you guys are able to draw punnett diagrams because they're very easy to draw out actually you put in there here's the father here's the mother we know this is autosomal dominant you're gonna put that here the allele and mix and match so this with that and this with that okay so you have two out of four here and this with that and this with that that's how you draw all right Moving on to the next question, a 23-year-old man is being evaluated for myoclonic epilepsy of recent onset. The episodes are short-lived and triggered by startle. Physical exam revealed proximal muscle weakness. Gomori trichrome stain. This is actually a specific stain, guys, that you gotta know has to do with a particular, uh, a particular condition. So... A lot of these questions really depend on you having to know something. So Gomorra trichrome stain of a muscle biopsy specimen shows muscle fibers with a blotchy red appearance. This is a buzzword, guys, for mitochondrial myopathy. This is essentially uh, what we mean here because these are mitochondria that are abnormal accumulating under the membrane or the sarcolemma of the muscle right there as well. And this is the Gomorra trichrome stain. All right, so if you look at first aid, you're going to see that mitochondrial myopathies can present with myopathy, lactic acidosis, and CNS disease. And here he's showing us one of these conditions where muscle biopsy shows ragged red fibers. Okay, so remember, guys, that you get your mitochondria from your mother, essentially, you get your entire. Uh, the entire oocyte of the mother and you just get the nucleus of your father fused in so the sperm contributes only with the nuclear dna component while the entire the rest of the cell of the zygote is a mother cell which means it will have the mitochondria in there if they're defective then you're gonna get them and they're gonna be transmitted to you as well which means that because this is a man he is it's impossible that he will transmit his mitochondria and so the probability that this patient's offspring will inherit the disease is zero there is zero chance because a sperm does not give anything but the nucleus you get the mitochondria from the mother so if his wife is normal his children will also be normal so his probability to transmit it is zero percent it's only maternal inheritance with mitochondrial diseases all right, moving on to the next question. This is the last one. So a 26-year-old woman comes to the office of her husband for genetic counseling. She's pregnant with her second child whose gender is unknown. Both parents are asymptomatic. I need you guys to highlight that. Both parents are asymptomatic. But the firstborn three-year-old son has recurrent episodes of anemia, jaundice, 
and painful swelling in the hands and feet. I think by now you should have figured out that this is a case of sickle cell disease. A blood sample is obtained from the boy. The hemoglobin electrophoresis performed at Ocon pH. The results are shown in the image. Here it is. This is the patient, guys. Here is hemoglobin S, and here is the normal. If he has a thick band at the hemoglobin S um, and doesn't have any at the hemoglobin A, then he's homozygous for sickle cell uh, hemoglobin and therefore has sickle cell disease. Because if you look here at the uh, genotypes, you will see that if you're a normal person, you get a thick band at hemoglobin A and nothing at S. If you have a sickle cell trait, as in you are heterozygous, half of that and half of that, so you have some hemoglobin A and some hemoglobin S. But because he has a thick band only a hemoglobin S, he has no hemoglobin A whatsoever, then he must be uh, homozygous for the recessive allele. All right, and since both his parents are asymptomatic, then they must have been heterozygous. Why is that? Because if they are asymptomatic, then obviously they do not have, uh, they, they're not homozygous for the recessive allele, right? But at the same time, they produced a child who is homozygous for the recessive allele, which means where would the child get this from? Obviously, it would be from both his parents, all right? So it, they must be heterozygous. If they have produced an affected child and they themselves are asymptomatic, then this must be an autosomal recessive disease. So the question is really asking what is the probability that the unborn child will inherit one or more mutant alleles from the parents? You can see here, guys, from this Punnett diagram that the only case where there is no mutant alley whatsoever is in this normal child. He's not, he, he doesn't have any mutant allele whatsoever. This is the only case here. All other children will have at least one mutant allele. And this is essentially how the question should be worded. So he's essentially asking what's the probability that any of their children or the unborn child will have at least one mutant allele. One or more means at least one. You got three out of four chances here that he will get a mutant allele. So three out of four, that's a 75% chance he will get a mutant allele. Again, guys, you need to understand that if their son is affected, he must be homozygous for the recessive allele. Now, where would he get his two recessive alleles? He's going to get one from his father and one from his mother, right? And so his parents must have been carriers, okay? So that is, it, like, it gives you an idea if the parents are asymptomatic and they get an affected child, right away, this is an autosomal recessive condition and the parents are heterozygous carriers. That's what you should infer, okay? All right, guys, I hope this video helped. Let me know what you think in the comments.